in this part we'll talk about the third group of kingdom protesta and that is the slime molds slime molds are saprophytic and they are considered as the decomposers and the reason why we call them decomposers because they grow on dead and decomposing matter this uh, or substance this dead decomposing matter could be just uh, a log of wood or it could be some kind of uh, leaves which have fallen so on that these slime molds they grow so they are saprophytic they would obtain their nourishment from this dead and decomposing material they are normally found in dark and damp places these organisms they are uninucleate and most of these cells they remain together so if we say this is one cell which is of the slime mold this is the another one the third and so on and all of them they secrete a mucilaginous sheath around themselves and because of this mucilaginous sheath it looks like a protoplasmic mass <coughs> this protoplasmic mass is known as plasmodium and plasmodium basically we call them the true slime molds they do not have cell wall it is only the plasma membrane present so there is no cell wall only plasma membrane and each one is going to have one nucleus and then the protoplasmic content also fuses so if all this protoplasmic content fuses it appears as if this is a multinucleated protoplasmic mass reproduction is asexual vegetative as well as sexual so if we talk of vegetative mode of reproduction or vegetative reproduction one is by fragmentation that means this big mass is going to break into pieces and then each piece will grow by division plus it can also grow by joining with the other cells so other cells can also come and fuse with this bigger mass and the mass is going to get bigger and bigger or a bigger mass can break into smaller fragments which will divide and grow into a bigger mass again so this is fragmentation the second method is sclerotia formation in sclerotia formation a little cytoplasmic mass gets surrounded by a hard layer and then these sclerotia get dispersed so it becomes of a dry compact structure but inside there is a nucleus plus there is the cytoplasmic material this is the vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction takes place by spore formation now the spore, spore formation takes place in structures called sporangia so if this is the irregular mass which is plasmodia during reproductive season a vertical structure would grow and a sporangium would be formed and from this sporangia the spores are released these spores will germinate and the spores germinate either to form an irregular structure or a biflagellate long structure there are two flagella of irregular size one is a smaller flagella and other is a longer flagella but the flagella are whiplash type whiplash means the base is going to be broader and towards the tip it becomes narrower on the lower side there is a contractile vacuole and this flagellated structure is known as swarm cell and this irregular amoeba like structure is known as mixo amoeba 
Now, these two are going to stay like this and then they may start acting as gametes. So if two swarm cells get or start acting like gametes, that means now sexual reproduction will take place. Even myxomoeba, they can also undergo sexual reproduction. Now, how is this reproduction going to take place? There are two, three possible ways. One is, if we say sexual reproduction, one is two myxoamoebae may fuse. So one myxoamoeba, this is the tiny one, it fuses with the other one. That means fertilization is going to take place and we have a larger diploid cell. And now this cell is going to grow, other similar structures are going to come and join with it and a plasmodium will be formed. The other possibility is swarm cell may change into myxoamoeba by losing its flagella and becoming irregular in shape and then it may follow the same process. And the third possibility is that two swarm cells may fuse and fusion of these two swarm cells takes place through their posterior end. The end where the flagella grow, it is the anterior end. The end which is opposite to it is posterior end. So fusion takes place through the posterior end. So here there are two flagella at this end and two here. And they fuse at their posterior end. And after fusion, they would again form an irregular structure. That means they would again lose the flagella. They would become irregular in shape and they would look like an irregular shaped mass. So whether it is myxoamoeba which is fusing, swarm cell changing into myxoamoeba and fusing or swarm cells independently fusing with each other. Ultimately, a diploid cell is formed which fuses with a similar type of cells to form this irregular mass, the protoplasmic mass, which we call the plasmodium. Now, because they're decomposers, they obtain their nourishment from the dead and decaying matter. Now, how do they take this nourishment? They release their enzymes on that substance. Digestion takes place outside and the substance comes in. The digested food is absorbed or that digested food or particle can also be engulfed. So this is how they take that uh, absorb or absorb the digested food which is obtained by breaking down or decomposing the organic matter. So this is the third group of kingdom protista. Kingdom protista was the one in which we kept all unicellular eukaryotic organisms and they divided kingdom protista into three major groups. One was photosynthetic protist. The second one was protozoan protist and third is slime molds. Photosynthetic protists are plant-like protists. Protozoan protists were animal-like protists and slime molds are fungus-like protists. So this is how our complete kingdom protista is covered. Now in the next part, we'll start with the other kingdom.